All right, John Kirby joins us, our KU football insider from Jayhawk Slant. John, hello, welcome. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Uh, we're doing well. We're happy to have you on. The Jayhawks have uh, have uh, kept a very, very good season going. They have Texas Tech tomorrow up in Lawrence, eleven o'clock uh, in the morning kickoff, and there's a lot, uh, a lot obviously to still play for uh, for this football team. Um, where are they right now? How good? How good is Kansas? They were 16th this week in the college football playoff poll. This is stuff that hasn't happened to KU in a long time. Uh, how real is it? Is a is it a hundred percent? You know, Bob, I, I think it is a hundred percent. You know, they do they do all the things that a good football team does. Listen, when you look up and down KU's roster. You don't sit here and see a lot of guys that you say that's going to be a second round NFL pick. That's going to be a fourth NFL pick. You just don't see that. What they are, they're just a good football team. You know, they've they they don't commit a lot of penalties. They don't turn the ball over a lot. They're well coached. They're they're schemed right. You know, offensively they they do a lot of things that put stress on opposing defensive coordinators. And they just find ways to always play just a little better than the guy that they're playing that week. You know, I mean, they played well enough to beat Oklahoma. Then they go to Ames, and they played just well enough to beat Iowa State. So, you know, it seems like they kind of play to the level of who they're playing. But I think this is a – you know, it's a, this football team is real. And when you look down the schedule, I, I don't know that there's any games that they have left that you're sitting there and going, well, they're really going to have trouble in that game. So what did you make of the the Lance Leipold, Michigan State stuff that he did his very best to refute? It seems like that was a lot of nothing. But how how good do you think KU has to be for the talk around their head coach leaving uh, would cease? Well, I don't know if there's really talk. I, I think there's people, you know, throwing stuff out on Twitter, and I think there's people that, you know, national guys that come up with, you know, hypothetical lists of who would be good candidates. Travis Goff said the other day, you know, KU's athletic director, he should be on every list, right? If there's a good job opening in America whose program is down right now and you want to get up, how many better candidates are there than Lance Leipold? The guy's gone to Whitewater. He's won there. He's gone to Buffalo, which is a hard place to win. He turned that thing around. He's gone to Kansas, which is just as equally as hard. And he's done it there, so why would he be on list? I just don't see – I don't think he'd leave for Michigan State. I think that he's he's settled in there. I think his family likes it. Uh, I, his son's a starting wide receiver on Free State's football team. He's a junior in high school, so he's got one more year. There, he's getting hundreds of millions of dollars of new facilities. This is his program. I mean, he's – this is the program that he's built. And, you know, at Kansas – if you can just do what he's doing and win, I've always said this, at Kansas, if you can win six to nine games every year in football, you'll be there for as long as you want to be. So I just think this is his program, and he's he's established it. John Kirby with us from Jayhawk Slant. He is our KU football guy. Uh, so here we are, and I'm I'm curious to know what you think of Jason Bean's legacy. Uh, he's, it feels like he played for Mark Mangino. Obviously he didn't, but it feels like he's been there a while. He seems like he's had to come to the rescue quite often. It seems like he's played, uh, well above average and that he's been a key figure in what KU, KU's been able to accomplish, uh, this season, especially, uh, what, what's his legacy? Do KU... People, are they starting to feel the love for him? Yeah. You know, there was, a, there was an interesting post on our message board. Every week, Bob, it's been, what's the deal with Jalen Daniels? Okay. What's his injury? With, what's the deal with his injury? What's his status? Is he practicing? Does he have a chance to return? And after that, after that Oklahoma game, somebody said, hey, it's time to quit asking every week about Jalen Daniels' status because – this team is winning games with Jason Bean. Listen, here's what people forget. The kid played a bunch of football at North Texas. Then he, tra- then he transfers to Kansas. Last year, a lot of people forget, Jason Bean played a lot of football last year at KU. He was the quarterback 
when they got their sixth win against Oklahoma State that made them bowl eligible last year. So he's played in some games, and he's got experience, and he understands that offense. So, Yeah, 32 games played as a KU quarterback, 20 of them starts. So he's – He's been a main guy. Go ahead, Jeff. So I will ask about uh, Jalen Daniels' status, but not for this week, but for uh, the bigger picture long term. What does that uh, quarterback situation have to look like for Kansas next year to kind of, you know, uh, prepare for the possibility that Jalen Daniels could miss some time? Are, Are you talking about that if he's, like, injured next year? Is that what you're saying? Right. If that were to happen. Well, what's their yeah, depth situation at quarterback? Well, what they're what they're going to have to do, guys, and this is a bit, this is a possibility. They're going to have to go to the portal to find a quarterback. Okay, you've got Isaiah Marshall, who who will be in town this week. He's like the 12th ranked dual threat quarterback in the country. Okay, he's been committed to KU. He's going to arrive early in January, so he's going to come in and get a head start. But that doesn't mean he's going to be ready to play next year. Right now, the backup is Cole Ballard. He was a preferred walk-on who showed up this June. His dad's the general manager of the Indianapolis Colts, okay? And so there's a, there is no Jason Bean to come to the rescue next year. So I think they're going to have to go to the portal. Now, what's going to get tricky there is when you go to the portal and you recruit a quarterback, what does every quarterback want to do? They want to play, okay? It's hard to find guys to say, we want you to come here but there's a good chance you're going to be the backup if Jalen Daniels is healthy. So it's going to be a very interesting off season in how they navigate that quarterback position, because I think it's a, there's a high likelihood that they're going to go after a quarterback in the portal. Interesting stuff. Talking with John Kirby from Jayhawk slant KU at home tomorrow against Texas tech and 11, 11 AM kickoff. So you mentioned, you look at up and down this roster and you don't see second round NFL picks. You don't see guys that are blue chip that we think are gonna, just going to go to the next level and, and dominate. So who are the two or three most likely KU players, uh, John, to get all Big 12 first team mentioned? Who do you think uh, d- is deserving of that on this roster? Well, you know, the, the guy that, that might – he's got a case – But his numbers aren't there is Kobe Bryant. I mean, I think he is easily one of the best corners in the Big 12. The problem is nobody throws his way. I mean, that's why Melo Dobson has two pick sixes in the last couple weeks and all the passes defended. You know, he's near the top of the league in that because nobody throws Kobe Bryant's way. I think he's a guy. I'll tell you another one who's just quietly put together a good season is their left tackle, Dominic Pooney. I mean, this guy, this guy came to KU last year from Central Missouri State University, okay? And, I mean, and nobody knew who he was. He goes in there, and he started every game since he's arrived at KU. And I think he's the guy that probably has a chance to be in an NFL camp and get some looks. Um, you know, I, I would have said early on Devin Neal, but he's kind of sh- shared some carries with High Sean. You know, they've had a couple games where they've played against teams who – lined up defensively and done everything they can to load the box and shut the run down. So, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of guys that you sit there and look at their numbers and go, man, that's an all big 12 guy, which is what I think what they're doing makes them pretty impressive with what they've done. So what do you see from Texas tech? They were a team in the preseason that were getting a lot of like dark horse, a contender type of attention, and that clearly hasn't uh, panned out. But is there any residual effect of that? Is there anything that you see out of Texas Tech that still suggests that uh, what people were thinking in the preseason uh, is legitimate? Yeah. I mean, this game concerns me. All right. I mean, you know, Texas Tech, I watched them earlier in the year take Oregon to the last drive. I mean, them and Oregon were tied late in the game. And, you know, then they got injuries. Their quarterback got hurt. Then their backup got hurt. So they played two games with their third string quarterback who turned it over eight times in two weeks. Okay. So then they kind of hit a spell there where they had, they, they had a, they beat, uh, they beat Houston by 28 and they, then they beat Baylor by like 24 
and then the kid got hurt, and they had a couple down games. And then he came back last week against TCU, and they beat TCU, and the offense looked much better. So, you know, guys, what Texas Tech does well, it's what Kansas doesn't defend well. All right, and Kansas has always had trouble here because I just don't know if they have the upper end athletes, but they've had trouble in space. And when you watch Texas Tech, I mean, they go four wide, they spread you out, and they spread you out to run the football because they're running back who's second in the Brooks, is second in the Big 12 in rushing. He's really good. I mean, he's 230 pounds. He can run over you, he can run around you. And they've got just good enough receivers that when they see the box sneaking in, They'll do that little quick out to the receivers, and they pick up five and six yards of play on that quick little out. So, you know, this game, there's some concern for me in this game because of Texas Tech's style that they play. For sure. John Kirby with us. We can't let you go, John, without asking you uh, about next Saturday, Kansas State coming to Lawrence to play the Jayhawks. There will be a ton riding on that game. This is one of those rare times in history when both K-State and Kansas are good at the same time. They both have highly thought of coaches. Uh, football's never been in a better place in our state than it is right now. Uh, how much is riding on that game, in your opinion? Yeah, you know, there's a lot just because, you know, it means so much to everybody. And, you know, the Kansas fans have been talking about it. It's been so long since they've I can't remember the last time you went into a game thinking that Kansas had a chance to, to win the game. So, you know, it's in Lawrence. I, I know Kansas State will have a lot of people there. But, you know, Kansas is going to have a shot in that game. You know, the just early on, you know, the thing that concerns you is, is just how physical Kansas State plays. And, you know, that's a game that Kansas State's always gotten up for. God, I remember being in, in Manhattan, was it 95, when both teams were like – that both teams are really good. And I remember Kansas went down and scored on a long pass play, and it was tied 7-7, and you're thinking, we got a ball game here. <laughs> and then you look back up, and K-State's up like 35-7. to But, but uh, yeah, it's been a long time since yeah. that game's meant something. And it, it's going to be fun. You know, I've already heard that they've already shut off the recruit portal because they let recruits, you know, the, the, the people they invite to the games can sign up for it. I've heard they're already booked for the recruits they had to shut the portal down like two weeks ago not even take any more recruits because it's been a hot pick absolutely for sure john we always appreciate your time thanks for coming on and talking uh, kansas football with us all right guys take care